By January of 1945, Japan's once remarkable territorial gains were now unraveling before their eyes. The Empire of the Rising Sun was being shoved back in every front, and in an ambitious strike, British and Indian forces launched Operation Matador, an amphibious thrust designed to capture the critical port of Chukpu in Ramri Island on the Burma front and begin the seizure of the landmass. The Indian forces then reached a stronghold defended by 900 Japanese, but just as the battle started, a British regiment outflanked the Japanese, who were forced to either surrender or retreat. The zealous Japanese servicemen, favoring anything over a dishonorable surrender, opted to retreat through a treacherous mangrove swamp filled with crocodiles. The unrelenting troopers had to endure disease, hunger, and treacherous waters as they sought to survive and outmaneuver their opponents. Still, the British were determined to take their Southeast Asian colony back, no matter the cost. Taking Burma Back Often overlooked, the clash between Japan and China during World War II had far-reaching consequences for the global conflict and the geopolitical structure of Asia after it was over. After 1938, Japan and China were at a stalemate, with Japan unable to take additional territories from the Chinese. Then, in a shift in tactics, the Japanese decided to launch an attack on the Indochina Peninsula to isolate the Chinese and cut them off from foreign supplies coming from the Pacific. The move, however, angered the colonial superpowers that controlled several territories in the peninsula, specifically France, Britain, and the United States. As Japan invaded Burma, China and the United Kingdom signed an alliance to protect it from Japanese control. Britain reinforced the area from India, while China sent troops south to support the British. Despite their best efforts, the Japanese had delivered significant blows to key British military bases and airfields by 1942, giving them full air superiority over the region. Due to an unfortunate combination of catastrophic weather, Chinese troops' inexperience, Britain's unwillingness to commit forces to the region's defense, and Japan's raw strength and vicious use of chemical weapons, Burma finally fell to Japan by August. The situation remained unchanged for several months, but by 1943, the war effort on the Western Front had turned in favor of the Allied forces, and they now felt prepared to pay more attention to the situation in Asia. A much more combat-proficient Chinese army, trained by American and British forces, was able to launch a new campaign, and for the first time in the Sino-Japanese conflict, the Chinese were able to inflict more casualties than the ones they received. By 1944, the Japanese onslaught that had seized the entire region and even threatened to pierce the Indian border had been utterly reversed, and the Japanese Empire was now fighting to hold Burma from the Allies. Then, as 1945 began, northern Burma was in Chinese control. Allied supply lines into China had been restored, and Britain and the US were determined to eradicate Japan's presence in the region. Consequently, Chinese and British forces pressed south in a synchronized effort to obliterate the Japanese troops. Operation Matador one of the main objectives of the Allies when planning their amphibious attack from the south was Ramri Island, a 50-mile-long, 20-mile-wide flat landmass that seemed like a perfect choice to build air bases that could be used during the liberation of southern Burma. On January 14, 1945, the 26th Indian Division was ordered to attack Ramri, with the plan set for a few days later, just as a Royal Marine Group from 3rd Commando Brigade invaded the neighboring Chaduba Island. Meanwhile, the Japanese defensive forces in Ramri consisted of the 2nd Battalion, 121st Infantry Regiment, with artillery and engineer detachments. The first stage of the assault was codenamed Operation Matador, and the objective was to capture Chaukpu at the north end of Ramri Island and the airfield near the port. Taking the port would severely weaken the enemy in the area, and it would serve as a staging ground for the rest of the attack. The Japanese knew a confrontation was coming, as British intelligence revealed they were setting up artillery units in caves along the coast to destroy the landing troops. In response, the Royal Navy assigned the battleship HMS Queen Elizabeth, the escort carrier HMS Amir, the light cruiser HMS Phoebe, and the destroyers Rapid, Napier, Norman, and Pathfinder to rain fire over the Japanese defensive positions before the landing operations. The shelling was highly successful. 
And by the time the 71st Indian Infantry Brigade began landing on the island's beaches, the Japanese capacity to respond had been severely crippled. Overwhelming advance. The following day, the 4th Indian Infantry Brigade took over the beachhead and swiftly occupied Chuck Pu while encountering little resistance. Then, on the 23rd, the 71st Infantry Brigade continued advancing down the west coast into the southern part of the island. Japanese resistance became gradually more significant as the Indian troops moved inland. Still, the Indian forces continued to make steady but decisive advances for the remainder of January as they pushed the Japanese forces further south. As the 71st Indian Infantry Brigade continued their attack, a Royal Marine Force landed on Chaduba Island, about 6.2 miles southwest of Ramri, and found it uninhabited. Meanwhile, the Indian Brigade was stopped by a defiant Japanese garrison, but resisted with prodigious tenacity. Then, on February 1st, the approximately 900 Japanese defenders were flanked by the Royal Marine Forces that arrived to support the Indian soldiers. With little options but to surrender or flee through the nearby mangrove swamp, the Japanese opted to escape and would deeply regret it. A fatal decision. Blinded by a fanatical doctrine of never surrendering, the Japanese commander made the atrocious decision of retreating through the marsh in an ambitious effort to join a more significant Japanese force located further south on the island. The Japanese men were already severely depleted and exhausted from weeks of relentless fighting, and many were injured or starved. Furthermore, they were no strangers to the ruthlessness of the Burma terrain. After years of fighting in the region, they knew the area was infested with disease-carrying mosquitoes, leeches, and enormous saltwater crocodiles. Still, they found it preferable to test their luck in the dangerous swamp rather than humiliate themselves by surrendering to the British. What's more, it would not be the first time they traversed crocodile-infested territory, and they considered the likelihood of an assault substantially low. Little did they know that the number of injured men and their utter state of exhaustion would make for a very different outcome than on other occasions. The swamp was home to thousands of South Asian saltwater crocodiles, the largest reptile in the world and one of the most aggressive predators in the animal kingdom. Reaching lengths of over 23 feet, the gargantuan beasts display the most powerful bite of any animal in the world, with as much as 3,690 pounds force. Once the predator clenches its jaw around a prey, it is highly unlikely that the victim will survive the encounter. They are known for hunting big creatures regularly, including sambar deer, wild boar, malayan tapirs, kangaroos, feral pigs, humans, orangutans, dingoes, and tigers. The Japanese soldiers were now walking into a terrifying nightmare. A Unique Battle Reports of what happened next are varied and contradictory. However, the Allied actions after the Japanese withdrew are well documented. The British forces immediately moved to surround the entire swamp to prevent the Japanese from escaping, even if they made it through. For the following days and nights, the Allies reported continued screams coming from the swamp, accompanied by the constant ring of rifle fire. With no Allied forces pursuing the Japanese into the swamp, the British assumed the enemy was fighting against the local saltwater crocodiles. Naturalist Bruce Wright, who participated in the battle, described the hellish nights they witnessed from afar, quote, That night of February 19, 1945, was the most horrible that any member of the NL crews ever experienced. The scattered rifle shots in the pitch-black swamp, punctured by the screams of wounded men, made a cacophony of hell that has rarely been duplicated on Earth. Of about 1,000 Japanese soldiers that entered the swamps of Ramri, only about 20 were found alive. The British made frantic efforts to help the Japanese, taking interpreters into the fringes of the swamp to plead for them to come out, but none of them did. Some reports from supposed survivors depict a scary scenario. As the troops advanced through the swamp, their health and morale quickly plummeted. The murky waters reached all the way to the soldiers' chests, and the mosquito swarms and lack of food soon resulted in countless soldiers plodding behind in a delusional, exhausted state. At first, the crocodile attacks were few and far between, with the troopers able to respond and put down the attackers. Still, as starvation, injuries, and confusion began to take their toll, the situation grew out of control and chaos spread among the ranks as the forces became disorganized and frightened. 
As the days passed, the soldiers who still had some energy opted to get out of the swamp as quickly as possible. Controversy The exact nature of what really happened in that swamp remains a mystery. The British managed to capture 20 Japanese survivors, who later described the horrors they witnessed. Later reports claim that up to 480 Japanese soldiers survived the ordeal, meaning that anywhere between 420 to 880 soldiers perished inside the swamp. The accounts of the British and the Japanese survivors led the Guinness Book of Records to consider the event as the highest number of fatalities in a crocodile attack in human history. But although there is no doubt that several attacks took place, historians have recently questioned the scale of the reptile involvement, arguing that the reptilians often feed only once every few months, as they require time to digest the large prey they swallow. It is thus improbable that so many crocodiles were hungry at the very moment the Japanese entered the swamp. They also point out that if the saltwater crocodile population was as large as to hunt down 420 Japanese soldiers, the mammal population in the area would have been eradicated long ago, and the reptiles would have starved. Scholars now attribute most casualties to drownings, starvation, and disease, considering the crocodile attacks a minor portion of the losses. Technical Results the seizure of Ramri Island was vital to the Allied efforts on the Burma front. The Japanese detachment could not offer the resistance needed to halt the overwhelming attack. Still, their determination left a deep impression on the Allied soldiers that faced them. After the victory, the island was quickly outfitted to serve as an Allied base for Operation Dracula, an ambitious attack by land and sea on the city of Rangoon by the British and Anglo-Indian forces, and other assaults on the southern region of Burma. The synchronized coordination between Indian and British forces was also a significant learning experience for all parties involved, and allowed both factions to work together much more effectively in future regional campaigns. As for the fate of the Japanese forces stationed on the island, British official historian Stanley Woodburn Kirby would put it best when he wrote in his book, The War Against Japan, The Reconquest of Burma, that the Japanese defense of the island and their valiant attempt to escape without surrendering, quote, in spite of the fearful odds against them, was carried out with courage and determination. Thank you for watching our video. Don't hesitate to click on your screen to delve into another of our Dark Documentaries channels, where you'll find more exciting history-inspired content published regularly. And hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.